Uh, first, I will uh, again welcome you all to this webinar jointly organized by the GCSP. I'm Mark Fino, the head of arms proliferation at the GCSP, and we work with our partner, MITO, Middle East Treaty Organization, represented here, among others, by uh, its director, Paul Ingram, who will moderate this webinar. In this webinar, as I said, we will talk about the, the, the current issue, which is uh, the efforts of the international community to, uh, to revert to full compliance with the JCPOA by all its parties and including the United States, because it, uh, the Biden administration has promised to rejoin the agreement. And uh, obviously we'll look at impacts in, on regional security, global security, in particular the prospect of WMD free zone. And we will also, of course, look in particular at the role of the remain, remaining parties uh, in the JCPOA. Thank you, Mark. Uh, let's turn now to Li Qijiang, who is Secretary General of the China Arms Control and Disarmament Association. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paul. And it's my great pleasure to take part uh, in this today's event. And uh, at the opening, uh, I would like to share some of my personal observations regarding China's uh, positions or perspectives. Uh, in relation to the GCPOA and as well as WMD in the zone, free zone in the Middle East region. Uh, firstly, I think China is a, a strong supporter of the JCPOA and had contributed to the successful negotiation of the agreement. Uh, China believes that the JCPOA is an important multilateralism achievement reached through hard work. Uh, it is conducive to maintain the peace and stability of the Middle East region, to preserve the international non-proliferation regime and enhance mutual trust and cooperation among relevant countries. Uh, the unilateral withdrawal of the former US administration from the JCPOA created a bad precedent for non-compliance with international agreements, which was uh, criticized by the international community. Fortunately, since the withdrawal of the US, China is still coordinating with the EU countries, Russia, Iran, to maintain the JCPOA and prevent, in order to prevent the escalation of the crisis. Uh, at present, the Iranian nuclear issue is faced uh, with both opportunities and challenges. As we, we all know, the U.S. new administration has expressed a willingness to return to the JCPOA, and China welcomes this positive movement and is engaging with all the JCPOA parties to a diplomatic solution. Uh, as we all know, uh, there is an important meeting going on today in Vienna, and I hope it will be uh, successful and uh, to kick off a good start of the resumption of a diplomatic dialogue. I think due to the complexity of the Iranian nuclear issue, all parties should pursue the negotiation uh, based on the mutual respect and equality. Uh, to preserve the JCPOA is to uphold the multilateralism and the authority of the UN Security Council. Uh, during the future negotiation, negotiation process, I think the United States should reflect on the damage to regional peace and international stability caused by its withdrawal of the JCPOA, and also reflect on the losses it has caused to relevant countries. The unilateral sanctions on Iran should be lifted as soon as possible and the long arm jurisdiction on relevant countries, including China, should also be lifted. And I think our diplomatic efforts should aim to the resumption of the JCPOA, not to negotiate a new agreement. 
and we should avoid to link the other regional security issue to the JCPOA. And lastly, I think recently Chinese Foreign Minister, Minister Wang Yi visited six countries in the Middle East region and proposed a five-point initiative on achieving security and stability in the Middle East. So here I would like to share two points of this important initiative. Concerning the issue of achieving non-proliferation, he suggested that, I quote, based on the merits in the evolution of the Iranian nuclear issues, relevant parties need to move in the same direction with concrete actions and discuss and formulate the roadmap and the time frame for the United States and Iran to resume compliance with the JCPOA. The pressing task is for the United States to take substantive measures to lift its unilateral sanctions on Iran and the long arm jurisdiction on third parties, and for Iran to resume reciprocal compliance with its nuclear commitments in an effort to achieve early harvest. At the same time, the international community should support efforts by regional countries in establishing a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. The other point is concerning the issue of fostering collective security. Uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi also suggested that, I quote, in promoting security and stability in the Middle East, the legitimate concerns of all parties should be accommodated. It is important to engage equal dialogue and consultation, mutual understanding and accommodation and improve the relations among Persian Gulf countries. It is imperative to resolutely combat terrorism and advance their radicalization. China proposes holding in China a multilateral dialogue conference for regional security in the Persian Gulf region to explore the establishment of a Middle East trust mechanism, starting with such subjects as ensuring the safety of oil facilities and shipping lanes and building step-by-step -step a framework for collective, comprehensive, cooperative, and sustainable security in the Middle East. So China is prepared to stay in close contact with all sides on the Five Point Initiative and work closely to promote peace, security, and de development in the Middle East. And I think China will continue to play a constructive role in revitalizing the JCPOA in the future. So I will stop here and I look forward to further discussions with all colleagues. Thank you.